walking down the road and I can't see where I've gone. I'm walking 90 miles an hour in the wrong direction. Yeah, where will I go? Where will I stay? I need something now to help me on my way. Still, you tell me that I'm still strong. I said, free your mind. back we are rocking and rolling social 19 is in the house for the last time uh coming to us from pond lab because once we get back from break we will be uh, well technically i don't know jeff might come in and produce but niche will be going home and i'll probably be in my basement um <laughs> so uh where else would i ever want to be in my my basement hey uh so listen Couple of things. Couple of, first off, let me just show. Let's let's talk about what what's happening today. If we could put the, uh, we're going to talk about our commonalities and our differences, and we're just gonna we're gonna see where we go. And here would be the volunteers that we are looking for. Um, ideally, fourteen people. We're not sure we'll get to all of them, but up to fourteen people. So only one for each category, right? So someone who dates outside of their race has dated a lot outside of your race um, or ancestry, I should say, but we'll just say race is good. Mostly who mostly dates outside of their particular group or never does. And by the way, we're not looking at like, yeah, I'm Polish and I date Lithuanians. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, so mostly versus never. Um, and by the way, you're not, nobody's going to be on the spot here. So, um, like, you know, we're not, if you date outside of your race, we're not going to ask you like intimate questions or something. We're just, we're going to have a fun conversation with all of these. Uh, where, where you were raised, someone who grew up on a farm, ideally on a farm, but like a really rural area. Um, and someone who grew up right in the heart of the, the burbs. Uh, two Jewish people, one who is observant and one who is secular. Uh, and, you know, not secular, ideally, if you're, both parents would be Jewish, ideally, but, you know, we understand that that may not be the case. Uh, but ideally, both parents are Jewish. Okay, we're just going to put that out there. Language fluency, someone who only speaks one language. And we have quite a number of people in the class who speak multiple languages. We have someone in class who speaks more than four so that would be nice. We want to hear from them. And then hair, uh, like straight, no body. And then someone with 4C hair. If you don't know what 4C hair is, you're going to find out. Uh, and straight, no body means like even my, look, I, what little bit's left of it, even I have body, you know, in my hair. Here, look at that. It like can stick up a little bit. But I mean, body is just like flat to the head, y'all, right? Looks like, always looks like he just got out of the shower. Uh, Two people who are Indian, like uh, subcontinent Indian, Asian Indian, and ideally, I don't know if we'll be able to, if we'll get this, but someone with dark skin, darkly pigmented skin, and someone with light skin, okay? Like, and then two people who are identified as mostly Muslim, uh, Sunni, and Shia, okay? Um, that would be awesome. We don't know what order we're going to bring people in, but that's like, what is that, seven people? So we, we have to wait but really um the com this is the entire class right here y'all i don't have any other slides for today the only thing going on will be the conversations that we have with people on the screen and they're going to be two at a time so 
The easiest one is dating outside your race. So can we just start there? So someone, this would be most interesting. So someone who never has, and ideally someone who's never been on the stream, by the way, but who has dated. Like, don't come on the stream and be like, well, I've never dated anybody. So clearly I was like, no, no, no. Just like, you know, people who have dated. Dating, we don't, we don't need to get into the inner, inner workings of what that meant for you. Uh, if you know what I mean. And that's someone who mostly dates outside their race. Okay. Uh, and then we're raised. We're really looking for someone who grew up on a farm, my friends. So if we can get that person, we'll hit gold and life will be wonderful. Um, and then just kind of keep your, uh, um, keep your screen up. Hey, we have someone who dated inside the race. So now we need someone who regularly dates or has only dated outside of their racial group. That would be really, really sweet. And then we'll have a conversation. Okay, so that's the first thing. While we're waiting for these things to happen, um, to get underway, let me say, uh, so we're in conversation, a couple of announcements. Um, we opened some more groups up for block six, um, I maybe for tomorrow. And then when we come back from break, make sure that if you have a, a dialogue on Monday when we get back from break. Don't miss any any of your dialogues on the second week of Block 6, y'all, because we're really running down to the end of the groups that we can open. On the final week of the semester, we'll have some makeup dialogues, but um, you, so we'll, we'll have them, but you don't want to rely on those. Like, you really don't. You want to make sure that you get your dialogue in, so don't miss a dialogue. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, your pack back is due on Sunday night, but you actually could do it on the Sunday after break. That's fine. Just don't forget. People always forget. So that's kind of that, how that goes. And uh, yeah, I'm rock, rocking and rolling, man. I don't know. Um, otherwise, life is awesome for me. Um, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Are there any are there any questions on the stream, uh, Niche or Jeff that we gotta we have to answer to while we're waiting for our the next only, person? The only one that I saw was somebody asking about pack back this week, and I re I remember you said something on Tuesday's class. Your pack back for this week isn't due until next week. Yeah, but the sooner you do it, the better. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, because it's just one of those things, you know what I mean? But I know you just want to blow out of town. I mean, why, why wouldn't you want to blow out of town? Um, any, any, you know, we have a third exam over readings and videos um, that will open up on, I think, the last day of class. So, or maybe the last week of class. I'm not sure if it'll be the last day, but uh, it'll be just like the other two, 20 questions, you know, the whole nine yards, about four hours of work. So plan that out. Uh, Okay, so Joy, how are we rocking and rolling here, y'all? Jeff, do you can you put those? I, I know that either I know they're on the chat, but for the people who are not on the chat, can you like put our put our stuff back up, put the, the categories back up so people can jump on? Um, so that's what we're looking for, my friends. Um, and the and the issue is, you know, if we were in one hundred Thomas. This would just be, you know, we'd have a room full of people and I just, we just get volunteers and volunteers come down. And um, so, but the issue that we're having is, uh, you know, we always have to wait for people to come on the stream. And then we only have Joy, who's like kind of pulling them on. And sometimes like this, there's a lot of people. So she's, it takes a while to make it happen. By the way, we have someone who speaks multiple languages also. So if we have someone who just speaks one language, that would be awesome. Um, that would be, so either one dated, you date regularly date outside your race or you speak one language. Those are very simple, my friends. Joy, if we could start right there, that would be, if we can make that happen, one of the, bring those folks on first. We are good. We have someone who's dated inside and outside now. Yeah, oh, Terrell. All right, man. Okay, so why don't you bring Michael and Terrell on? 
and we will go there. I have the right the background. <laughs> Yo, I love the background, man. Hello. Hey, wait, is it wait, is it Terrell or Terrell? Terrell. Cool, man. Where are you from? Me, um, originally Philadelphia, but I live in Upper Derby, Pennsylvania right now. I'm up yep. at school right now. Yep. And Michael, you're in State College because you were on a couple weeks ago, man. Yeah. So listen, man. So uh, Terrell, how, so what's it, what do you mean when I say dated outside your race? What do you walk us through, man? I mean, like dating, like relationship wise or situationship wise, too. Yeah. Situationship wise, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. um, dude, so. hang on. I'm not asking for details, dude. I'm not like this. Nah, so I was you mean like, like hook, you mean like just getting together with somebody. Yeah, 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 basically. So how? So Michael, the question I have for you is what? What question do you have for Terrell? That's a good question. Probably like I want to say, what's it like? Because obviously it's going to be similar. But like I've never kind of had to deal with dating someone or being with someone who doesn't look like me. So like, do you get any backlash? I guess for that. Not, not really. Um, I mean, I've definitely like, not really, because even with other women like who are different ethnicities than I, like, um, their parents were even cool with like interracial dating as well. So, yeah, not really. Okay. Yeah. Do you have another question? What do your parents think of it? Like their parents are still um, it. Dude, nice question. <laughs> dude. Yeah, um, I they say, hang on, can I just say something? That's the question white people would never ask. Because white people have this idea that, oh yeah, because black and brown people, they're all cool with this. And like, nah, man, that's like, okay, so go ahead, bro. Yeah, so at first, um, my mom, like, the first woman I dated was a black woman. Um, and then shortly after I, after I started dating outside my race, um, you know, she would, she would pick at me sometimes for it. But it wasn't as if she didn't accept it. Like, she would accept it, but, you know, she would just pick at me sometimes. Um, yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't really care, though. What, what do you mean picking at you? She'll be like sometimes, um, like, <laughs> like we had a oh my bad. We we didn't have two, yeah, we lost your video, man. All right. Yeah, so it was like I would say it was one time where um I consistently dated outside my race for like a short period of time. So even if it was like you know when I told her about um after like a rhythm of not of not dating inside my race, she was like oh it's not a black woman, huh? You know, or like little stuff like that. Um, she didn't really care, though. Yeah. Hey, Terrell, what question do you have for Michael, man? I would say, like, have you wondered um, what it's like being outside the race or what would be some, um, like, fears you have of dating outside your race? I think I'm not sure if, like, I necessarily have fears about it. It's just more like... I don't see myself doing it because like all my life I've just been growing up in like very majority like white communities. So I've never really been like attracted to people with different appearances than me. True. True. Um, another question. I don't really have another question for you. Well, hang on. Well, yeah, you do. You, you, get, you have one in there and you're nodding <laughs> right in there, bro. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask Michael a question. But, bro, you grew up, so you're a military brat, right? Like, you grew up. Yeah. So, w how majority white communities? Because all, all the military people I know, like, are really, seem like they're all so often surrounded by people of lots of different backgrounds. Maybe as a little kid, like in, as a kid, I grew up in Colorado Springs and they had like a large Hispanic population there. Uh -huh. But that was kind of before I took an interest in women. So ever since then, I really only lived in state college or like rural Virginia or just all farmland white families. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Terrell, what do you got? You have another question? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I don't know because when like when you date and stuff, it's like you don't want to put um like a certain type of like race when it comes to love and stuff. So you know, so it's just like, have you just always like chase? I want to say chase, but like just been always like attracted to um. I'm sorry, I was getting a call. Like, you know, someone of your same race, have you not wondered, like, what it's like? Um, or how do you think your parents would react? Dude, good question. How would your parents react? Um, so I'll address, like, the first part of that question first. Like, I haven't necessarily been, like, chasing after white girls my whole life. But, like, I haven't been attracted to anyone else. It just kind of happens that way. Like, I'm not closed off to dating outside my race. And I, I'm i pretty sure my parents would be fine with it. Like, they've told me and my sister before, like, hey, like, if you want to date a boy, a girl, doesn't matter to us. So I think the same would apply to skin color for relationships. Mm. Hey, I, I actually have a question, but first I need to say something to the class. Hey, so the next, we have we have someone on the screen who's raised in a rural area. So that means all we need is someone who is uh, racing the burbs, man, and we're ready to go. We also have some light-skinned Indian dudes, so we need someone who's dark-skinned Indian. And we have a question from the screen. Oh, dude, Terrell. Do you see that, Terrell? The question mm -hmm. is, does it, does it matter where you are when you're with a significant other of a different race? Does it matter where you are? Yeah, do you think about it? Like where you go, who you're with? Um, actually that, that question, like, I'll be honest, sometimes it does come up, um, or, you know, it's just because sometimes you may not feel, I don't want to necessarily say comfortable in like a certain setting or like you would just have that thought of like, okay, um, I'm with a woman of a different race where, you know, the people around here are majority of the same race as the woman or whatever. And so it was like, what do they think sometimes? Um, but it, that thought will arise but you'll like get over it too. Cause you know, even walking around, you see other interracial relationships. So it's like seeing that it's like way more comfortable. Yeah. Dude, I think if you were wearing that sweatshirt anywhere, man, people, <laughs> they, they'd be digging you. You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> hey, so Michael, I have a question for you. When you say like, you haven't really thought about it. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I can't, this is a really, this is a really cool question. And I'm like, and I want to explore it a little bit. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I don't know. I guess I would think I'd be thinking about it a lot, right? I mean, I thought about it a lot when I was young. So I'm just, yeah. Did you have you? Is it just that you'd feel like you've ne you because you've been around majority white people, you just wouldn't have the opportunity? It's not really necessarily the opportunity. It's just like the subconscious want to like I got you. not saying that i have anything against anyone of like a different race just hasn't really i just don't see them how do i say this correctly that's a tough one to answer because like it's not like i have anything against them it's just i don't see myself dating them right now necessarily yeah yeah okay well you know there is a way in which terrell maybe you see this a little bit i see it but there is a way in which people fetishize people not of their particular ancestry group, right? And so, um, like, it's like a thing to accomplish. It's a thing to, it's like a feather to put in your cap or something, right? Whereas, and you're saying like, yeah, I don't really have that. And so that that's kind of, that's cool, actually, because there are a lot of people who it's, it's like a, it's like, a, it's a thing they can say they, they've done, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say like, yeah, it, it is true that, you know, um, there are a lot of people who fetishize, you know, people of different um, ethnic ethnicities and stuff. But it's also like, you know, like I said earlier, like, you know, love has no color to it. It's like, and I feel what um, Michael was saying too, like, you know, sometimes even you may have not been given the opportunity, whatever. It's just like, that's just how it happened. Like you, you know, you feel for somebody just because you feel for them, you know, despite their ethnicity, but you know, for somebody who hasn't dated outside their race, mm -hmm. sometimes it might be just, you know, 
they just always ran into somebody that was of their race. That they yeah, yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, not not at all uncommon. Hey, really fast, peeps. Hey, uh, class. W- hang on. Hey, let's go to camera. Let's go to camera one, Niche. Oh my God, here we are. So here's what we got. W- we need someone who we need someone like we'd like to have someone who only speaks one language. That's easy. That's the vast majority of you. So um, that's that's the lowest hanging fruit. And then also someone who grew up in suburbia. We, so that's also really low hanging fruit. So two people, one language, and then grew up in su- suburbia. So it'd be nice if you grew up in suburbia and you were not white. That would be like pretty awesome. Uh, so uh, hop on. Joey's waiting because we're otherwise we're just going to keep talking to. Terrell and Michael because we can't we don't have the pairs yet so got that and then a dark skinned Indian dude would be really nice and we don't have any Jewish people yet like what's up with that okay uh, we had a question from the chat thing you like most and dislike most about dating different races Terrell you're on my friend this is you speak for the whole world here <laughs> <laughs> um, thing I like most and dislike most about dating outside um my race i would say thing i like most is definitely like you know stepping into someone else's world of a different ethnicity um you know seeing how you know their brought up was um and just like the diversity in the two um mm-hmm. definitely just learning something new that's the best thing uh, i would say the worst thing would be like if i want to say like i don't know they did mm, that that could also be a problem too. Like the way they grew up is very different. So you know when y'all talk about you know some things or y'all won't really meet all the way mentally, um, mm-hmm. or even if they're not aware of you know your culture too, and you know you have to take that time out to you know teach them, which isn't a bad thing. But if they don't like it, it's like dang. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that. Yeah. All right, hang on another one, man. We I want to get another question for Michael, but do we have another one from the stream, Niche? And uh, do you notice great uh, great cultural differences? Or are they are they difficult to get past? And maybe Michael, that's the also. Yeah, have you noticed any great like s- cultural differences that you really can't get past? And Michael, maybe this is also a thing for you. Like I. Yeah, yeah there, there are there are a lot of differences, right? But but you're young still, so you got time. One main thing that I notice is just like I can relate to relate to other white people so much more. Like I can a lot of, like a big part of my relationships is just I like to be able to understand and help out with issues they're having in their life. And like there are issues that non-white people experience that I'll never be able to fully like comprehend that issue. So I feel like I can't help them if I can't even understand what they're going through. Mm-hmm. So like, it's just a lot easier for me to date someone who I can relate to more. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That's probably a pretty common idea that a lot of white people have. People in any majority group probably have. Um, I don't, I think it's, I'm not so sure how accurate it is, but from the outside, it's a pretty common idea. And I think at some level it's it is accurate, right? So I'm with you on that. Terrell, you get the final word, and then I know we're gonna find someone from the Burbs, Joy, <laughs> that we're gonna bring on. <laughs> All right. Um, with Come that, some- I want to say. Wait, could you repeat the question, please? Okay, the question is: What's like something that you really can't couldn't get over, like some cultural difference? Um, mm, cultural differences I can't get over. Uh, I wouldn't say it was necessarily any cultural differences I couldn't get over because I was, I'm like a very open minded person, so I was always open to everything and open to like understanding, um, you know, like why you know people are the way they are, how they grew up too, um, because there'll be a lot of similarities with like you know struggles sometimes as well, whether that's like you know and inside the family or whatever but as far as like their cultures as well it hasn't been anything that's been too hard to get over um yeah got you yeah okay that's cool i like that hey gentlemen 
Awesome. Uh, thanks. It's very cool. I really appreciate it. And Michael, you're not even in the class, but I think we're going to see you next semester, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Terrell, did you, uh, what year are you, by the way? Um, I'm a super senior right now. Oh, okay. Enjoy, man. Enjoy the, enjoy the landing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, so uh, I want to respond to uh, the question about being secular Jewish. But first off, I want to be clear. We, we need one person from the Burbs. And Michael and Terrell, you guys can just jump out of Zoom and hop back into Twitch. Um, thanks, man. Thanks to both of you. Um, so uh, hold on. I'm going to crank my camera back on. And um, we need some, we would like to have someone from the suburbs and someone who only speaks one language, my friends. So got that? That's pretty straightforward. So that's the next two. Um, and secular Jewish and observant. So observant Jewish, I think by secular Jewish, I mean, which would be probably most Jewish students at Penn State, right? You're Jewish by birth, but eh, doesn't really. Maybe you go to the synagogue, you maybe celebrate Shabbat a couple times a year, but it's a cultural thing. It's not like really a big thing. But wait, here I am. I'm like talking about it. I don't want to talk about it. You have to come on and talk about it. And observant, well, you know what observe, you know, it could be, you could be orthodox or just observant, however it is, but be really nice. I want to have that conversation. Um, all right, man. And so, all right, we have someone who's secular and Jewish. We need someone who's observant. That's like, that might be harder to find at a place like Penn State. Actually, it's not. I know it's not. Uh, and we need somebody. And the, hey, Nish, give me the next person. What are, are we going to go with suburban rural or are we going with languages? Yeah, well, who's up there? Though? Okay, like, here we go. Charlize. Okay, so... Uh, Annalise and Charlie, you're on. Annalise and Ch wait, hang on, we lost Charlie or Charlize. Hang on. Oh no, there you are. All right, man. So you can you bring them on the screen, folks? Uh, so we were rocking with um, Annalise. So you grew up on a rural area or, or farm or what? Where'd you grow up? So I think I have an interesting uh, perspective because I grew up in like a, a rural town that is slowly becoming more suburban as more people come out of like the city area into the town. Yeah. Because I'm like 35, 40 minutes outside of Philadelphia. So it's like the ideal spot for people to start populating. So you grew up in the, in the rural area and Char Charlie, you go with you grew up by Charlie. You grew up in the Burbs? Yeah, I grew up in New Albany, Ohio, and then I moved to Syracuse and grew up in a small town called Casanova. Listen, man, and that's your bedroom that you're in? <laughs> this is my cousin's room, but yeah. Your cousin's room, yeah. That It just looks like a suburban bedroom. Yeah, it know? does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not sure what a suburban bedroom looks like, but I have a feeling that's it. Uh, hey, so Charlie... What questions do you have for Annalise about rural life? Um, I guess, like, what was the biggest setback of living on a farm rather than living in a city for you? Probably um, socially it was really hard for me growing up. Um, since I lived farther out of town, so I wasn't near any neighborhoods and... I really only have two neighbors and then like a few people on my street and then there's a few farms on my street. Um, so like I never had the opportunity to just like walk to a friend's house or like meet up with people and my parents both worked like really long hours so I would spend a lot of time just by myself at home. Follow-up question, man. You gotta have, Charlie, you gotta have a couple here. I do. Um, what was your school like? Was there a lot of diversity? I mean, I'm assuming not, but. Uh, mainly white people. I mean, of course there were like little subsets of people, like, you know, there were like the super redneck people and then there were the not so redneck people, but um, primarily white with like a very, very few people of color or um, other races or ethnicities. 
And what can you define difference? Charlie, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Difference between super redneck and just regular redneck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I myself, like, I do, I wouldn't describe myself as a redneck because, but, like, to other people, I might be because, like, I partake in, like, rednecky activities. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, like, there were people in my town that, like, would have Confederate flags, like, in their pickup truck, like, driving into school, like, that type of shit. Oh, sorry. Wait, that's think that, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Do you think that your mindset has changed since going to college? Like, have you thought back and been like, oh, wow, that's weird. Like, when I was on the farm, I thought this, but now that I'm in college and have more experience, like, this is different for me? I mean, like, since, I mean, like, moving to state college, since state college is such a condensed area, I mean, like, my perspective has changed a lot. I always thought, oh, like, I'll just live in, like, a rural area for the rest of my life or, like, an area like my hometown. And now since, like, experiencing life somewhere else, I'm like, wow, like, this is super convenient and, like, it's very easy to just meet up with people and, like, be a part of, like, the social scene. And it just, like, makes me feel more, like, alive and, like, a part of something. Um, Because growing up was kind of isolated, so. So... Annalise, what questions do you have for Charlie? I don't know why this is a question that I have, but like, how close did you live to your grocery store? Oh my God, that is awesome. <laughs> that is such a cool question. I think my grocery store was like five minutes away from my house. Walking or driving? Driving. How far away was yours? Driving between like 10 and 15 minutes, but walking to the grocery store would probably take me over an hour. <laughs> so. What other question? Um, Dude, you got, I don't know if you can top that one, but go ahead. Give it a shot. <laughs> I know I came out with a really strong starting question. <laughs> um, and by the way, I just want to tell the class, we still need someone who only speaks one language. Can be anybody from anywhere, any background, doesn't matter. Just nice to have somebody. And we don't, because we don't want to go with Annalise or Charlie, or we don't want to use somebody else. So someone who only speaks one language, right? Um, Hop on, because that's where we're going next. All right, go ahead. Yeah. I guess another question would be, like, what is your idea of like what a rural area looks like in comparison to where you lived? Um, it was kind of weird for me because I lived in the suburbs, but like 10 minutes away from my town, there was like farm country. So like whenever you would drive into another town, you would pass like the cow farms and like all that stuff. And like there was Amish people. So I guess like that's what I think of just like random Amish farms and like big hay bales and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you go ahead? Do you have another one? I'm just like trying to think. Um, if you have something to add, go ahead. Well, here we'll, I, we have one from the stream, actually. Uh, go ahead. You want to tell it to me, or you want to put it? it is there is there a lot of more small of smaller businesses or chain businesses in rural areas? Yeah, like what what's out there? Like what what kind of businesses? Like what what are they selling besides tractors and stuff? Um feed. I would say that I don't know because I've been to like super urban areas and then as well as where I live. And like I would say that from personal experience there seems to be like an even amount, but just like different types of small businesses. Mm. Like in the city, I would say like, there's like a higher concentration of like, you know, people that like fashionable stores and stuff like that. And like people making their own clothes and selling them in like um, small mom and pop boutiques. But I feel like out where I live, it's more like, oh, like we're selling groceries to people, like we're selling vegetables from our garden or like we just harvested a bunch of vegetables and like like stuff like that mm -hmm. so 
that's my personal take on it. But yeah. hey, I have one for Charlie. I feels like people look down on the suburbs, and when they think about the suburbs, they think about white people, and they're always talking about like they first off condescend to the suburbs. Right. It's like a negative thing to be suburban. It's cool to be urban. It's like being rural is just like, what the F is that? <laughs> and but suburban is like, you're not cool. Like you're not multicultural. You're not cool. But here you are, this black person from the burbs. Like, how is that for you? Um, it was a little weird growing up. I definitely felt like I was kind of forced just to blend in with all the white people that were in my town. Um, and it was obviously like, I don't know, they just felt comfortable like picking on me, which was fine. Like you just learn to take it with a grain of salt. But I also felt like they kind of like not, I guess they kind of just thought that my experience compared to someone who lived in like the ghetto was, I mean, obviously is different, but like we still face discrimination. And so everyone would be like, oh, well, you live in the suburbs, like you're well off, like you don't really have any struggles as a black person. Mm -hmm. So this is other black people that say this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when and you say, people. and when you said picking on you, you mean other black and brown people, not white people, or did you mean white people? No white people. Like I was the only black person in my town other than my sisters. Well, so, really? When, yeah. How did people pick on you? Like, what did they do? The um, I don't know. I guess an example would be like, um, I was sitting in class and the teacher would like turn off the lights and they'd be like, Oh, where's Charlie? Like, we can't see her because I was black, yeah. which is like yeah, stupid, yeah. like stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. Got you. Annalise, do you have anything else? Um, something I think that's pretty interesting going off of what you just said is in my, like in town, it's like I live outside of town, but like going in town, there's like a specific area where I know a lot of like I'm always how am I trying to word this there's like specific areas like going into town for people of different races and ethnicities but the it's predominantly white where I'm from mm -hmm, and then there's just you. like a small section of like Vietnamese immigrants and then like you know some people who are from India and then some like black people and then some Hispanic people so I just think that's, I don't really know what to say about that, but like, it's pretty interesting going off of what you just said, saying that you were like one of the only black people in your town, which was like really surprising to me. Mm -hmm. Hey, so we have a, que a question from the stream, I think. Uh, how many people were in your graduating classes? All right, that's a good question. Yep. Annalise, how about you? honestly don't know. What's your guess? Like 50 or 150 or 10? I would say probably closer to like four or 500 because my school district spanned like a really large area. Oh, it got covered, you, It covered probably like four different towns and there were... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. people came. So people came from a long distance to go to that school. Yeah. 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 And they actually mm -hmm. built a new high school so that they could expand um, the border even more yep. of the school district. So. And Charlie, how how about you? I think I had like one sixty, and mine was the biggest in our school. Yeah. So that's so fascinating, right? Because it's really about how many. It's about how many square miles that the school covers. Right. All right. Another question from the stream. Wait, uh, I grew up in Lancaster, which was both rural and um, like suburbia as well. My graduating class was like 750, which is just mind blowing to whenever I met people here who had like graduating classes of 40. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. The next question is how long was your bus ride? To school. Yep. Wait, hang on, you're muted. We're not getting volume from you. From that could be our end though. Jeff, Annalise does, or Niche. We don't have audio for her. Go ahead, try it now. I think it's, 
I think okay, you're good. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Well, mine was one hour. Like one hour? Yeah. Oh my god, that sucks. I was the last stop and the first stop. So like the first person to be picked up in the morning and then the last person to be dropped off. Damn. Oh, that sucks. Your whole life? Pretty pretty much. When I was um between like kindergarten and fifth grade, I rode a short bus, like a separate bus. Yeah. Because I lived off of like the normal bus pass. So they would yeah. just like send a short bus to pick up people that lived in mine. Dude. Um, Charlie, how about you? Last this is the last question. Uh, my dad drove me, so it took like three minutes, I'm pretty oh, sure. Dude, life is good, isn't it? <laughs> all right so listen hey thanks thanks to both of you thanks for uh coming on yeah i appreciate it yeah that's cool awesome man um you can hop off the the you can hop off the zoom call if you want but hey i appreciate it thanks annalise and charlie hey um so we're gonna go with language now but we still need someone who we needed someone who's jewish who identifies who is really observant, um, more observant than not, let's just say. And then we're still looking for somebody who is, uh, in, dude, we didn't, we never got the 4C, we never got straight hair and 4C hair. Like, come on, man. I thought that was going to be like really straight up. Yeah, we might, we might go to Joy or Niche, but it'd be better if we didn't. Four, come on, 4C is easy, straight's easy. I'll, uh, all right, man, let's do language. Um, um, so we have Omar and Talea. That's where we're at. Hello. And also I foresee here as well, so I can do you, you do. You might we might be holding on to you for that, but <laughs> there's a lot of foreseers out there. So so Talea, what language is so, so wait, you only speak one language, so clearly English. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, what question do you have for Omar? Um, how is it living in like a bilingual, like, well, is it a bilingual household? Do you live in a bilingual household? Omar, you're on, man. Yeah, and that's the question probably. So Wait, hang on, we're, we're, yeah, you gotta turn your volume up somehow. Uh, is, can you hear me or not? Yeah, talk you, right into your mic for some yeah, reason. Yeah, if you open up your audio settings on Zoom, um, under audio, you might be able to see like a button that says auto adjust for your environment or something. You might want to click that off and turn your microphone closer towards the right. Yeah, it's right next to your microphone button, the, that little up arrow. And at the very bottom is audio settings and you want to jack your volume up. Man. Yeah, it's all the way up now. Oh, dude, you're killing it, man. You did you hear the question? No, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Talia. Is it Talia or how do you pronounce your name? It's Talia. Talia, awesome, yeah. man. Can you repeat your question? I was asking, like, how is it like living in a bilingual house? Well, do you even live in a bilingual household? Like, yes, yeah. Um, I haven't lived in the house for a minute, but yeah, I used to live in uh, Egypt and we spoke Arabic there, so. Uh, now I speak English when I, when I moved over here to the U.S., so. Did you move it, with your parents? No, I moved by myself. Oh, okay. And so, wait, so two languages? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so how, so go back to your question. How, how is that? Um, I don't think it was that different than anyone else. It's just like, I guess like I learned English, uh, while I go to school in Egypt that we have like. We learn English as a second language, and then we learn French as a third language. Um, I didn't really stick with that third language. It was kind of hard, but uh, <laughs> English, we, we just used, like, everything, like, math, science, English in, class, in, like, school. And then Arabic was just, like, the common language of the country. But then when I moved here, I didn't speak English, like, in Egypt, like, back home. But when I moved here, I had to, like, learn English. So, like, kind of, like, step by step, I started learning English. But now it's, like... I'm not really living with my parents, but um, like my parents do speak a little bit of English. I mean, everyone in Egypt learns some English, but it's not it's not like uh, something that's odd or like, oh, he speaks two language. That's kind of cool. It's like everyone speaks kind of a little bit of English. Yeah. Dude, 
Talia, follow-up question, man. Do I have a follow-up question? Yeah, you got yeah, you got a yeah, bunch I did, of things. Yeah, I did, but I, like, I like forgot it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say, like, um, how, how exactly did like, you learn English? Because I know, like, for some people, like, over here, they were, like, they learn from movies or stuff, something like that, or they just watch, you know, hood movies yeah. and then just went up there. Yeah, uh, when I was back in Egypt, I kind of, like, started listening to music, like, English music, and then started watching like TV shows and a lot of movies, but then I never really spoke the language until I came here. So like, I was at the airport and then I remember the Wait, guy- Wait, hang on. Hey, Omar, hold your, yeah, hold your mic back up in front okay. of your mouth. Yeah. yeah, like I remember the first time like I had to speak English was like at the airport. Uh, the guy that was sending my passport and he was just like talking English and he was really fast. He just wanted to get off his clock. I think he was just like had a day and he was just like speaking really fast and I'm like standing there and I'm like, huh? And then he just kept asking the question, the same question. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, yes. He just stands my passport. <laughs> he just like, okay, you can go. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> that went well. But yeah, just like uh, at school, first year, I came here as a senior. So like, I didn't really know much English. But then I was just like, I was the only brown guy in my school. I was uh, mostly white. And I just didn't speak to like a lot of people. Some uh, Some... Some people came up to talk to me and uh, I was just like, tried to, to like talk back. But then it was like, almost at, it was, like I'm translating words from Arabic to English at that point. And then- Okay, hang on, hang like, on. Talia, what's your next question? <sighs> I was about to say, like, I know like in America, people are like, like a lot of girls are like, they love people with accents. So like for you, was it like a lot of girls like came at you because like you had an accent or like, well, what's your accent even thick? Cause I don't really hear an accent right now. It was thick, like four years oh. ago. <laughs> um, I mean, some girls came up to talk to me because, like, I was just the only different guy in school. I thought, like, they're just being nice and, like, they can talk to me. I, I don't really know why. Like, I remember this girl who would always come sit with me, like, during uh, our break. Um, she actually, like, wrote, like, kind of, like, something in the journal, like, the, the school journal about it. And I'm, like, it was, like, the guy who came from Egypt, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, him and his brother. She, like, wrote a story about us. Um... I just thought that interesting, but like, I didn't really, I didn't really know that concept that you just said, like, be like people with accent. I, I didn't know that existed. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. Dude, <laughs> dude in, in the US, we either like them or we really dislike them. People go one yeah. way or the other. Man. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Hey, I, I Omar, what question do you have for Talia? Talia, uh, do you wish you talked a different language? Yeah, there's like a lot of languages like I've tried to learn, but I never fully like learned it. Like um, sign language, I know sign language will be I can like introduce myself, but I can't do it like. Wait, language. how do you introduce yourself? Introduce yourself in sign language. Um, I can do like my, my name T Y L A Y A. Nice to meet you. Nice, dude. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and like I've tried to learn like a Ghanaian language because I know like some Africans, which is called Twi. I don't know how to fully pronounce it, but I think it's called Shwe Twi. But yeah. Um, I took Latin, I started to learn Latin, I started to learn Spanish. It is never fully like, I never became fluent. I see. Where are your parents I from? I like, who, who, do, like, what do they speak? Where they come from? Uh, they both speak English. Crazy. Like, we don't really know, like, where we come from. Like, yeah, obviously somewhere in Africa, but we don't fully, like, know our backgrounds too much. I know, like, we're Irish or something like that, but. I see. Why didn't you, they, like, your parents never, like, was she to kind of like learn a new language or anything like that? No, I mean, in high school, like um, in high school in America, we have to take a language. So that was the reason why I took Spanish and Latin. Um, sign language was just like a choice for me. But like, I, like when you do it in school, you're only learning it to pass the test, not to actually learn, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. How um, do you have any other? Qu I have a question for you, Omar. Yeah. How about when you at what point in speaking English did you stop translating statements into Arabic? Um, I think it was like maybe like a year or like a year and a half in. Um, at that point, like I had learned like a good amount and like talked to like people because I started working at a restaurant, like customer service. I thought that would be good for me since I would be talking to people all day. Um, I think that really helped me a lot. But then it would, it would I was I still had like kind of like struggle like talking like fluently English um yeah it would take me some time but I would have to think but it's just over time like the more I felt comfortable with people around me just like the more I just like it clicked and like I just started talking but like when I'm like nervous or like under pressure or like 
presentation or like something like that, I would like, I would like take my time with it and like have to breathe and like uh -huh. think about what I want to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, hold, make sure you hold that microphone up in front of your mouth. Talia, do you have any, do you have any I haven't, we, the stream has a couple of questions for him. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have one, hold on to it. What's your preferred, what's your preferred language? Preferred language? Uh, hmm. Okay, so, I mean, it's not like a preference, but like, I mean, it's like depending on who I'm talking to, but if, if I had to pick one, I guess like, all right, so here's the thing, it's weird. Um, Arabic is like, it's the best way I could express myself in kind yeah. of ways. So like I could, and like when I compare both languages, the sentences that I want to say, it takes a lot shorter sentences for Arabic to represent what I want to say. You know what I'm saying? Like so, it's a lot shorter. All right, here's a question from the stream. What's your, the first swear word you learned in English? Uh, the F word probably. <laughs> I didn't know the N word was like kind of offensive. I didn't even know that back home. <laughs> really, no, you didn't talk like, about that? No, we don't yeah. have like race problems like here. So like, so like it was funny when I came here as a senior and we were reading this book about I don't know, like some uh, a running slave and a, a a young kid. I don't know. I remember what the book was called, but it had N words in it. And I was the prof like the teacher had me reading it for the class, and I said it, and then the whole class stopped, and they were like, "No, we don't say that around here." And I'm like. Well, okay. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? But so, so that's inter that's interesting. Huh? Talia, wait. I got it right. Like Talia, right? Talia, like Tyson. 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 Ty. Got it. Ty. Yeah. Okay. Talia. What do you know? Any swear words in sign language? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll learn that. You if you learn sign language, if you learned it when you were in like junior high school, that would have been the first words that you learned. So, you know. Like, I, I took classes like CCP to learn it. So, like, ain't no teacher in there like, hey, this is how you curse. Yeah. All right. So they, I never yeah, they don't teach you that stuff. Hey, uh, okay, here's a question from the stream. Um, all right, hang on one second. Yeah. Do you dream in both languages? <laughs> how long did it take for you to start dreaming in English? Uh, I don't dream. I haven't been dreaming for a while. Yeah. Jeez, I'm all Dude, I've been speaking <laughs> Spanish for 40 years, and I still don't dream in Spanish at all. Maybe one time I did when I was living years ago, living in Ecuador. But, um, yeah, I still don't speak in Spanish or dream in Spanish. Um, all right, man. Any, Tylea, any other questions for Omar? No. Do you, do you feel motivated to learn a language, to learn another language? At yeah, all? but it's like one of those things, wait, you're talking about me or him? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's like one of those things where like, I would be like really motivated for like a week and then I'm, I'd be like, you know, I feel like I learned enough, that's it. Yeah, I got it. Cause like, like, it's harder to learn a language when you, well, I'm 20, it's harder to learn a language once you're older. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. All right, man. That's it. I think we're rocking and rolling. Hey, um, Tylea, we might have to bring you back on for 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 C actually we 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 are good. You 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 rocked it. But no, we'll hold, stay on stay on Zoom because we might bring you back on for four C here. All right. Yeah. But Omar, you can take wait, Omar Sunni also. Oh damn. All right, hold on. You can stay on too, bro. Hey, uh Let's get let's go to Joseph and T Taylor, man, or Joe and Taylor. Dude, let's talk about Judaism for a hot minute, man. The original Christianity, you know, G Christians forget Jesus was a Jew. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. the most famous Jew in the world is Jesus of Nazareth. And like, I don't know, Christians like, I don't know, they kind of lose sight of that somehow. I don't know, whatever. I was reading last night i was reading this article about blood libel and i didn't hey so listen man um you, taylor so you you identify as observant yeah so i can you hear me yeah we can hear you and yeah. like hang on joe is it joe or joseph 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 ask taylor a question about what uh, whatever wherever you want to go my friend uh, sure. How does, um, how does your Judaism compare to that of your parents? Well, so I'm like not Orthodox. Like I 
grew up. So my mom is Jewish. Um, both parents are Jewish. Actually, her dad, um, like turned, like was Catholic and then became Jewish. Um, so, and my dad's Lutheran. So I followed my mom's religion growing up. So I went to Sunday school, like Hebrew school for like four hours every Sunday from nine to like one o'clock. Um, we, I do do Christmas and, um, Hanukkah and then Passover and Shabbat and all that. I went, I had a bat mitzvah. So like I do both. So it's pretty fun. It's actually Dude, a great experience. Nine to one. That's like an Afri yeah. African-American evangelical church on a yeah. Sunday. You know, four <laughs> hours long. Yeah, I also Probably didn't Sunday dance school. in the aisles. So anyway, go ahead, Joseph. Yeah. Would you consider yourself conservative then? Conservative like. Like Judaism. Like, like, um, you know how there's Reformed Judaism, Conservative Judaism, and then, like, Orthodox? Yeah, um, well, it's just, like, so my grandmother passed away, and she was, like, really Jewish. So we normally, we do it as, like, kind of, like, to remember her and to, like, just, like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, our holidays are, like, really, like, fun. Like, we get together and kind of, like, celebrate her life. So, like, I don't really know what how i would like consider like what i consider myself but i definitely want my kids to like experience hanukkah and christmas like that kind of thing because i did celebrate both and it's very different so i don't really know what i would consider myself dude plus you get double the holidays man right yeah, double it's the fun. so fun it's honestly the best like the like the holiday season's awesome for my yeah. family I remember when I was little, I was always jealous of the kids that like did both. Yeah. They get twice as many presents. Yeah. Well, not, not only that, like, I don't like, we do get like both, I do get both presents, but it's not really about the presents. Like my dad is Lutheran and he has like a black, he loves like Passover and like Hanukkah and like going to like bat mitzvahs because it's just so fun. Like it's, it's so fun to see like both, um, both religions. Dude, Taylor, you could, you know, do like this kind of side conversion to Islam. And yeah. basically you'd, you'd rock with all three. You'd have holidays. Like, there's like three or four yeah. a month. You'd be, you'd be killing it. Yeah. You know. So my, my aunt actually, like she's, um, she works for like, she graduated here from like a communications major and she works for like um, this Jewish company and she goes to Israel like twice a year. Well, not right now. And I was supposed to go, um, in May, but then well, actually March, but never went because of COVID. So like, I'm really upset about that and bummed out, but she like loves going to Israel. She says it's like, yeah. awesome. Hey, uh, Taylor, what about, what questions do you have for Joseph? Um, so you can, you consider yourself like an Orthodox Jew? No, I'm conservative. Oh, okay. So yeah. did you do like Sunday school growing up? Yeah. So I, okay. So my parents are a little bit more religious than I am. Yeah. And so growing up, like I always went to Sunday school. Um, I like had a bar, uh, bar mitzvah um, yeah. and we would go to, we would go to services like somewhat regularly, like you, like every high holiday, but for like some Shabbats as well. Um, but as I've gotten older, um, my Judaism has become more of a cultural thing for myself and like more of a community-based thing. Um, like I'm still like very close with the kids that like I grew up going to like Jewish summer camp with. And like, I still love like the community aspect of Judaism, even though I don't have quite as close of a relationship with God. Yeah. So, so is that, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. So did you like, was everyone, like the majority of people in your community, were they all Jewish? So I grew up in um, Harrisburg in the suburbs. And so okay. there were probably, I think, I mean, there were 400 kids in my class. There were probably like 15 kids that were Jewish. Um, yeah. okay. uh, so I knew, I was friends with like some kids that were Jewish through my high school, but the majority of the kids that I knew, I knew like through my, um, through my synagogue or through like, have you heard of BBYO? Um, no, I haven't. 
it's like this uh, Jewish youth organization that like a lot of kids in high school would do. And so like, that's how I met a lot of my Jewish friends that in like summer camp. See, like, hey, so, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. So what, what, do you, what is secular then? Like what, tell the class what's, what you mean when you say you're, you're so you're ortho, you grew up Orthodox, but you're secular. I grew up, like, I grew up conservative. So I consider myself, I consider myself secular because the aspects of Judaism that are important to me are the community aspects and the cultural aspects. Whereas like, I don't consider myself very religious. Like I don't pray to God. Um, I don't think that like the, the, the prayer aspect is like a big part of my life is as much as the community part is. Do you go ahead, Taylor, do you have a question? Well, I just find that like, like, so I graduated from a high school of like 350 and like, I don't know, like no one in my high school like knew I was Jewish mm -hmm. until like my um, bat mitzvah like invites went out and like everyone because I've never <laughs> really like talked about it. It was kind of like like I would sit or, like and like listen to people like make Jew jokes and I just like was so like kind of insecure about it. But like after my um, bat mitzvah, I remember like everyone like at school was like that was like awesome. Like that was so fun and I, like now I kind of just embrace it. Like I love being I love being like having a mom that's Jewish and a dad that's Lutheran, like seeing both like sides, but like my, um, so my synagogue was like, my whole family went there, all my cousins. So it was more of like, no one from my school, like went there. Like it wasn't, I didn't really know many like people there, like so everyone this... came from different areas. This is what I think is what's really fascinating about Judaism in the United States, right? There are certain areas, certain communities where so a really high percentage of people who are Jewish and then other areas, which is kind of in some ways like the two of you where it's like there really aren't many Jewish people around, but there are places where you really would encounter like Joseph, you said like a summer camp, right? So you went to a Jewish summer camp, like all Jewish? Yeah. 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 So like where you would really encounter your Jewish roots in that yeah. way yeah i like i have i have like where i where i live like you don't really see many jewish people at all um there's still some but uh i have like one friend that's from livingston new jersey and like i was dude. i spent like a weekend at, at her house and like everyone in the area they were so jewish it was like dude that's just, like everywhere, just going into like target with yarmulkes on and it was like very it's it, it like a town north of tel aviv or something you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> livingston new jersey <laughs> yeah all right man awesome so uh so secular so the idea here is that secular so judaism judaism represents so i'm gonna say this and then you guys Correct me if, if you think I need to be corrected, but there are different elements of, of Judaism, right? There's the religious element and being observant, meaning obs observing the, the fundamental laws of the, the Torah, like the, I don't know, what is it? Like the halakha or something? I don't know how you say that, but so you following the following Jewish law, then you, so the religious component, then you have just the community component, right? Like, which is just like Judaism as a, as a sociological, as a cultural experience. And then you have just this kind of secular piece, which is also kind of the cultural piece, but also could be just the purely intellectual side. Like I have a lot of friends who are Jewish who they don't even really engage in the, the cultural part of Judaism. They hardly participate in anything, but they really like the idea of Judaism. They don't believe in God. They don't really participate in any of the cultural pieces, but they love thinking and talking about the ideology and theology of Judaism. Um, like, yeah, I, would say, I would say that applies to me too. Like, even though um, I don't have a close relationship with God, like, I do think that there are um, a lot of, like, really important things that I learned, like, through Sunday school, like, through, I guess, like, mm -hmm. the Torah. There's a lot of, like, good messages in there. And I also really like that, um, in my opinion, Judaism is a, is a religion that like teaches you to question, to teach it, that teaches you to like ration and like never take things at face value. Um, like there's a, there's like an old joke that goes like, if you put, um, 10, 10 Jewish people in a room, they come out with 12 different opinions. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's, there's people of the book, man. 
if I could choose that, that's the, that intellectual side of me. If I could choose a religion, I would, I would choose, <laughs> I would choose Judaism. Right. Well, I'm, my, my mother's gynecologist was Jewish. So I'm like, you know, one <laughs> half of 1%. That's where my name comes from. Shmuel. So yeah. I was named after him. So, and, uh, have you ever eaten bacon? Um, either of you question yeah. from the stream. Yeah. Dude, all right. We didn't ask Omar either, but Joseph. I, I have before. I I try not to eat pork. Um, I like don't follow like the laws of kosher. Like I'm not kosher, but yeah. that's one thing is pork. I try to stay away from. Dude, I got you, man. They probably like it, especially factory farm pork, man. What's your favorite Jewish traditional Jewish dish? Traditional. Taylor. Um. So I really, I love matzah ball soup. So once a year we have like this Jewish like convention thing um, where they like make a bunch of Jewish food and we, everyone in the community like goes and gets that. And my, yeah. we get like tubs of it. I love it. It's my favorite, yeah. my favorite food. I like, I like that too. Joseph. There's a lot of really good answers to this, but I would say my number one is bagels. I love, bagels? Yeah. With some locks on it too. Do like a good bagel though, like a real bagel, not yeah. that fake shit that you get in most places. Right, right. right. Yeah. Also, have you ever heard of Kogel? Yeah. 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 Love, Love that. It. Okay, final thing, man. Jewish summer camps are a big thing. Was that big in your families or in your lives? So for Joseph, it sounds like it was. Jewish summer camps? Yeah, is this, this is a question for me? Yeah, question from yeah. the street. Yep. Yeah, I would say like that was a really big part of my um, of my childhood. Um, yeah. I went every year since I was eight, um, and like I'm still like really close with like the friends that I've made through it. Um, like yeah. I like I hope to send my kids to Jewish summer camp. Like I hope to yeah. send my kids to the same one that I went to. Honestly, yeah, yeah, really that's cool. Childhood. Taylor, how about you? So we didn't do summer camp, but through my um, synagogue, we did like field trips and stuff. So we went to like New York City where like the Jewish community is and like that kind of stuff. Um, so no, we I never went to summer camp, but we did like field trips, which was fun. Got you, man. I never went to summer camp either, by the way. Did you just believe in heaven? There it is, yes or no. This has got to be from who knows what it is. Um, Joseph, do wait, Taylor, do you believe in heaven? I mean, yeah, like, yeah. This is a com this is a complex one, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, yeah. I don't okay. know. Yeah. But, but is oh, wait, is but is that from your father's side, the Lutheran side? Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I I'm not really like religious, like very religious. Yeah. In either side. I think it was more like what you said, like cultural, like why we went, but like I don't I never really thought about that. All right. Joseph, do you believe in heaven? I, so I personally don't believe in heaven. The way that like heaven and Judaism has been described to me is yeah. that it's not a big part of teaching. Um, yeah. Like I never really heard a lot about it in Sunday school. And the reason, the reason why is because um, in Judaism, like you're not supposed to like do good things and like do virtuous things and like follow the commandments because yeah. of, like, like a promised afterlife, you're just supposed to exactly. do it because it is the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, because it's what yeah. like, I would have wanted. So that's why it's like, it, it is a thing and it is like stated in the Torah, but it's not like talked about a whole lot. It's not a big part of it. Yeah, it's not like you're we're just going to dangle it out in front yeah. of people, you know, yeah. that's Which, like, I guess what, this... yeah. And it's an interesting question because it's like very surprising to some people that like something as like significant Dude. as an afterlife, like isn't talked about a lot in the Torah. Dude, I know there's so much about Judaism that people don't know and they don't understand and they don't get it, which is really surprising, especially when it's Christians and Muslims, because Christians, Christianity, because Islam emerges out of Christianity, which emerges out of it, out of Judaism. And so you'd think that people would study that more, but they don't. So like, whatever. Hey, listen, uh, thanks you all. I hope over the break you get some rockin' bagels. Uh, <laughs> I will because I'm going to Jersey and I, I get killer bagels in New Jersey. So. Hey, okay. so anyway, Taylor and Joseph, thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. All right, man. Hey, let's just bring Nishan on and, and Tylea. I'm going to, I'm, we're going to, yeah, we're going to do the hair one. So Omar, you can, Nishan, you were on the other day, man. 
They, yeah. Do you take your hat? Do you have straight hair, bro? Uh, relatively. Nah, yeah, but you got like, you got, you got body in that hair, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, and Talia, you, Nishan, do you have any idea what 4C hair is? No, nah, it's my first time hearing about it, to be quite honest. What do you think it is? 4C hair? Um, honestly, I could not tell you. I don't have a single guess. Yeah. Um, Tylea, can I w- ask? So you're looking, are you looking at Tylea? Yeah, I'm looking. That's 4C <laughs> hair, my friend. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yep, that is it. Yeah. So what question do you have? Um, let's see. Have you had, have you had any difficulty finding barbers that can cut your hair? Um, I don't like to, okay. So like, usually I would like get my hair like straightened or something, Mm -hmm. but I don't like to go to the shop because not a lot of them know how to deal with natural hair. Like they'll like put too much heat in it because it takes more to, um, straighten 4C hair, but Mm -hmm. they'll like put too much heat and then you get what's called like heat damage where my hair doesn't curl anymore. It just like stays straight, which is not supposed to. Okay. Gotcha. I don't trust too many people with my hair. Nor should you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what other question do you have? Um, That was a good question, by the way. Thanks. Um, so I know like in terms of beauty standards, like it's been very whitewashed in history. Like has that bothered you growing up as a kid? So it's, cause it's so like, like, readily apparent. Yeah, like when I was in middle school, when I first, like I used to straighten my hair all the time. Like you would never catch me with my hair like this. Yeah. But I remember when I first started coming to school natural in middle school and they were like, why do you never have your hair done? And I was like, oh my God. I mean, this is kind of, <laughs> but yeah, but they used to always like pick with me about it. And it was like, you need to do your hair. You need to have your hair done. Don't nobody like a girl who never have her hair done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Talia, how about you? What question do you have for, for Nishan? Um, is it easy for you to like find products for your hair? Like, do you have any difficulty when it comes to your hair at all? I mean, not really. Like, I don't really use products myself. I just keep it like, natural. Um, oh, you don't use anything? Like, no gels, no nothing? No, I just see. I need I need at least twenty different things in my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> all at like one time. Yeah, for me, it's just like I wash my hair and then like I comb it to the right and leave my house. This <laughs> is it's very yeah. simple. Dude, be part nice. of being a guy too, my friend. Oh yeah, of course. And throw your sweatshirt yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. How about what other question do you have? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Hey, I feel like um, people with hair like that is like a lot more simple, you know? I feel like people have more questions about hair like this than they would somebody with just like mm, no yeah. straight wavy hair. Hey, I have a I have a question. Tyler, how often do people ask you about your hair? Very often. Like I was in Walmart a few weeks ago and I had like two ponytails. Um, like it was it was my natural hair with like two ponytails. And this lady came up to me and was like, Oh my gosh, you're like a cute little cartoon character. How do you do this with your hair and all this stuff? And she asked me, Was my hair real? And it was just like it's okay. your hair. and like, like, like is it real? <laughs> yeah. And she was like a white lady and she just like came up to me like just freaking out like I was, I don't know. Like I was a cartoon character, a celebrity or something. Dude, maybe, yeah. Maybe, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of those moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, we have a question from the stream. We got it. Hey, by the way, do you know the difference between four C and four B hair? By the way. Um. Yeah, I have some four B. Um. Like in the front, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. See, yeah, like yeah. that little like looser curl. I have four B. Um. All in like the front, but like the middle and everything is more so like 4C. It doesn't yeah. do any curling. <laughs> well, yeah, like coil is not curls. Do you know where those categories came from? Um, I have no idea. I didn't start hearing about it until like high school, like when I was like a freshman in high school. Listen, man. So it came from a stylist that was really close to Oprah Winfrey, and he developed the categories, right? So one, two, three, four. And initially it was just 4A and 4B. But then, you know, like 4B was the most tightly coiled. And we say coil because it's really a coil. Like if you look under a microscope, it's a, it's like a coil. Initially, there was no 4C. And then, you know, people just started adding 4C on. But initially, it was just 4A and 4B. People um, try to add on like 4Z now, too. 
Dude, because you know why? Because people always want, it's just like people want to smoke weed that's like 100% THC. Everyone just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. Everybody wants to push. It's just like, come on, man. It's all good. Hey, next, do you use coconut oil in your hair? Nishan, that's a question from the stream. Do I use coconut oil? Yeah. Um. No, I mean, I remember as a kid, my mom used to like put it in my hair like once every few weeks. It was like the worst experience ever because like, I'll sit there with my hair like drenched in oil with like a pillowcase over it and just like have to stay, sit like nowhere near the couches because I sat on the couches and like, get stained. I remember just like smelling very fragrant yeah. at the time, but no, nah, I haven't used coconut oil in at least like eight years at least. Tylea, do you know, did you know, do you know that's like an Indian thing? Coconut Using oil? Using coconut oil? No. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I knew whoever asked that question had familiar, either is Indian, is probably Indian from the stream. What other question do we have? Uh, I got another one now. Have you ever experienced more security with 4C hair products? Oh, like locking more it up on the shelves and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Where are you from, kind of hard to, I'm from Philly. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to even find. Like right now I'm in State College, but... um. And they don't really have like a black hair section in state college. So I have to go home to go get all like my hair, like all like the stuff for my hair. But I tried to go yeah. to the Walmart down here to look for, you know, the stuff that I usually use. And it's like, it's not there. <laughs> like there is no yeah. black hair section. Well, we used to, we used to have a salon right on Beaver Avenue and they sold all tons and tons of stuff. And they were open for quite a number of years. Um, and then they, you know, it was like, it was started by a couple of former students and, you know, and then they, it just kind of, they, they left. You know, moved on. Uh huh. We hang on. We got another question, y'all. Um, as a black woman, do you get annoyed if a white woman with curly hair uses products? And oh, come on, what kind of question is this? Because it is it cultural appropriation. Okay, here, this is the question. What do you think about anybody who would say it's cultural appropriation for white people to use black hair products? I don't go with, like I don't. I'm not like easily offended. I'm not one of those people that's like easily offended. So if it's like, if you want to do that, go ahead and do you, you know, like, I'm not like, oh, yeah, you man. shouldn't use it. You shouldn't do this. If that's what you want to yeah. use and if that's what works, then you do you. Yeah, that's right, man. If you like the products, like, Nisha, you might be out like, you know, you never know what you can find. You don't have to use coconut oil. There are all sorts of other products. Yeah. And like most people, like they won't ask me about like my hair. They'll just, you know, kind of like be like awkward about it. But I'm not like, you can also always ask me about my hair. You can ask me whatever. You can touch it. I don't mind. You know, like it's better. Like I like it better when people try to like figure it out. Yeah, well, it's cool, right? Like it's a, there's there are all these things that we do and we engage with and we don't we don't talk about it. But like you know, if you think about Terrell when he, who first came on, right? So if like you like it like you know you learn by the like being friends with and being really intimate with um, people of different backgrounds, right? So, all right, man, listen. Final question, uh, Nishan, are you your fifth year senior, right? Uh, it's actually my fifth and a half year, but yeah, Dude, you're a super duper senior, man. Yep. And and Tylea, what year are you? Junior. Junior. All right, man. Did did you apply to be a facilitator? Me. Yeah. No. How <laughs> come? Come on, man. I don't know. Okay. I mean, like, I never really like thought about it. Okay. okay, well, think about it. I'm not we a very punctual person. You that's really like, need that's a, you know. Okay, well, think about it. You have, you have awesome hair. We like people facilitating. Am I right? Nish, Darnisha, Joy, we really want people with awesome hair. Nishang, you have awesome hair too, my friend. It's those <laughs> coconut treatments. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, man. All right, hey, thanks both of you for coming on. I really, I appreciate no it. No problem. Thank and, you. Yeah, thanks for staying on. Be well. Hey, okay, class, here's where we're at. Um, it's uh, 5.52. Um, Lily's going to call me in a hot second. We're going to put some questions up. Probably not going to get them up till about, well, who knows? I don't know. We'll get them up as quickly as possible. The most important thing is uh, be safe this weekend. Don't be all crazy with your friends and stuff. The virus is crazy out of control. Um, and... Yeah, it's just not something you want to have. And uh, be safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. 
It's these things Can you right here. The um quiz details so we don't have an issue like the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the, when the quiz is going to be available. Yeah. Will it be open till 11, 8, 11 p.m.? Yeah, we'll, or we'll leave it or open till late later. We'll leave it because we're running late on the quiz. We'll leave it open till uh, eleven o'clock tonight. Well, it's open always. You can take it late, so you can take. What it right do now. they do if they look and they see it and there's no questions? They won't because we won't. We won't. We won't allow that to happen because that was when Lily. With the screw up on the quiz was because Lily wasn't around and I was doing it and I'm a knucklehead and I screwed the whole thing up. We will not screw it up this time, uh, but we're going to be a hot minute late getting it up. Okay, y'all, uh, be safe, be well, and we will be back in action on the uh, week after spring break. Thanks, y'all.